Hey my weight loss peeps, it is me Era. Welcome back to another video. This is again me always. If you're new, if you're new here to my channel and you've never seen one of my videos, hi, my name is Era. On March 9th of 2017, I had gastric bypass surgery with the amazing Dr. Elizabeth Dovek at GBMC Towson here in Maryland. It was a excellent journey it has been an excellent journey and i am still enjoying this journey right now and i just love to talk about some of the things that we don't always see about from my perspective my perspective being a younger woman i'm 24 years old so i definitely had surgery at a younger age i had it when i was uh 23 i started the research process when i was 22 and also being an african-american woman it is some becoming more popular to have you know weight loss surgery and plastic surgeries and things like that in the african-american community but there are still not many of us who are vocal so i so i definitely wanted to be the voice for those people and just for anyone in general who is going through the weight loss surgery process or is thinking about it are just even weight loss period so one of the things that i constantly get asked about is how do you break a stall first of all it is amazing to me how much weight i've really lost when i really think about it in the grand scheme of things losing 130 pounds is absolutely major and i have to take the time to acknowledge it and acknowledge myself now that i think about it because often i really do beat myself down i wish that was further along in my journey i wish the scale said something different but i have to remember i have lost a whole person so you get to that point when you have you know more than 100 pounds to lose for me i have to lose 200 pounds to be at a good healthy weight range uh for my height so hearing that it just seems impossible and then you lose 50 and 100 seems like it's doable then you lose that 100 and it's like okay um you know this is probably gonna be about it like how many people do you know have lost over 100 pounds and then you end up losing 10 and 20 and 30 and then now it's like i'm looking at my next goal of 150 once i reach 150 50 more pounds out of that 200 pound goal 50 more pounds out of that 200 pound goal seems just completely achievable and completely doable so i want you to definitely think about your weight loss like this even if you're in a you feel like you're in a stall you feel like it's not coming off just think about where you can be in a year in two years in three years i didn't just when i had surgery i didn't just think about you know being a year post-op i thought about being three five ten years post-op and just creating my body i knew that this was going to be a journey and it's definitely one to be excited about but with all that being said, moving on to the things, the actual things that I do when I notice I'm having a stall, when I'm not losing any weight despite my best efforts. So number one, I always have to check myself about my water. Water, first of all, our bodies are solely, like, well not solely, but mostly made up of water. Our body is just a lot of water. So that means we need a lot of water to keep it function, to keep our insides going, to keep things that are shouldn't be in our body out of our body, to keep our skin clear, everything like that. And water is vital to weight loss. You have to drink your water. It is recommended that you drink at least eight, eight ounce glasses a day. However, I personally like to go with the half your body weight in ounces method just because i think 64 ounces if you're not drinking water it's a great goal to obtain but if you are currently drinking water why not just push it up most people are going to be over 64 ounces except you know if you're really small most people are going to be over 64 ounces so just go ahead and bump it up definitely i've noticed when i'm not drinking my water like i should i can hold on and retain like five pounds of weight it's no joke the next thing I do to break a stall is make sure that I'm focusing all my meals around protein. This is a very small, vital thing to the weight loss surgery community, but if you really ask yourself, it is something that we do not do hardly enough. Think about like, no, like real shit, like real protein. I know that me eating a keto diet there are a lot of things in keto diets that are considered protein, but I know, I know it does not fit and it's not the best option for me being bariatric, like pizza toppings. That stuff doesn't carry a lot of protein. Chicken wings doesn't carry a lot of protein. Having an actual piece of chicken breast, having an actual piece of salmon, piece of tuna, maybe a little bit of red meat if you eat red meat, 
solid, firm protein. That is what gets our stomachs full and that's what makes us feel um, satiated for a very long time. And that is the whole purpose of our stomachs being reduced either by pouch or either by having them removed BSG style. It is the purpose that our stomach should be smaller and it should take less food to fill it up. But you can put slidey foods into your stomach. When you put slidey foods into your stomach, that leaves room for you to do what? Eat more food. When you eat more food, you're not in a calorie deficit. And when you're not in a calorie deficit, you're not losing weight. Point blank and period. I don't care what lifestyle you're doing, what diet you're doing. You have to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. Number three, if you know me, you follow me on my Instagram, my Snapchat, which you definitely should, by the way, I'll have them popping off the screen here and here. Definitely know that I love to work out. Working out is just, I don't know, it's absolutely amazing to physically be able to do something that I wasn't able to do a year ago. It gives me so much energy. It gives me so much life. It makes me feel really, really, really good. I think even not weight loss dependent, now that I'm into a routine of working out, I cannot imagine life without working out. Now, with that being said, sometimes our working out goals may not line up with our eating goals. When I say this, this is what I mean. We can abuse exercise. So we can either overeat and think that we can out exercise the bad diet, which we cannot. So if you are taking in a thousand calories and you know, you know you're eating some junk and you think, okay, I can work this off, you can't, don't do that. But another thing that you can definitely do, I know this is especially geared towards being very atric more so, but it can be geared towards anyone, is you do not eat enough calories. What I mean is I'll have days where I'm pretty much doing CrossFit style workouts and I may eat 800 calories. That is a no bueno. My body is going to hold on to weight like no other. My body is going to just that's how bad my body's gonna hold on to that weight like sometimes I will get again gain between like five and seven pounds when I'm not eating enough I do truly believe in starvation mode I believe that your body is a well operated machine when it's healthy and you're giving it the right things therefore it's going to do anything to self-sustain itself and if that means of holding on to every piece of fat and weight because you're not giving it enough you better damn believe your body's going to do it. So you need to adjust your workout program based on your caloric needs. Next thing I do when I need to break a stall is, and this is a very rare occasion, is having a cheat day. This one is a very controversial one for me. Some people who follow more if it fits my micros don't believe in cheat days because they literally fit it into their micros. Um, some people who are strictly keto don't like cheat days because it will kick them out of ketosis. I just believe that the body, again, I said it is a well-operated, well-oiled machine and the body is very smart and complex. I believe that with anything, your body gets used to things. So just think about it in the sense of if for, for some reason you had to just start walking to work, you had to maybe walk 20 minutes to work. Initially, for the first month or two, or maybe even three, that added activity, you'll probably start to notice a change in, you know, losing weight and your energy levels and everything. But after you do that for a while, your body will become adapt to it. Your body will become used to it. Once your body is used to restricting carbs or restricting calories or just the set number of calories and carbs, your body just becomes, this is what we're adapted to, this is what we're used to, this is, this is how we get the body moving and producing. And then your resting metabolism, re your basic, your resting metabolism rate will significantly decrease. Basically, that means me sitting here, I'm burning calories. You're sitting here watching this, you're burning calories. So I definitely believe that sometimes, you know what, you just have to have that cheat day. You have to change those calories up. Now, when I like to do cheat days, I don't really like to do whole days. Um, I may have, you know, regular breakfast, regular lunch, and then I'll have dinner and I'll have a, a drink, glass of wine, some vodka, I love vodka, um, something like that. And I've noticed that I can get on the scale the next day and I've lost two pounds. And I may do that for a day or two, go back to my program, and my weight starts to fall off again. So it's just a way of tricking the body into thinking that we're doing something new because I want you to do what I want you to do, kind of like a kid. You gotta trick them into doing the right thing. That's how you have to trick your body sometimes. 
And the very last thing I do when I'm in a stall, I simply weigh it out. Stalls are completely natural, trust me. I noticed that when I started to lose a rapid amount of weight, large numbers of weight, my body had to take a second to say, hold up, I need a minute to readjust. And I actually love this time. I was telling my girlfriend that it seems like when I'm in a period of not losing weight, physically my body starts to like kind of shrink a dink dink. It's, it's so weird because I could be like at the same weight or like fluctuating two or three pounds for maybe a month sometimes this may happen or even three weeks. And in those three weeks, my body just starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the scale isn't doing anything. And then I go back into my losing period and it doesn't look like I'm getting smaller, but I'm losing like crazy. And then when I go back into that period of not losing, smaller, smaller, smaller. So basically what I think it is, is, and I'm no scientist or whatever, but just what I think it is, is your body is just taking time to get adapt to the weight loss. It's getting used to carrying a lighter you and it's reproportioning things. And it's definitely something to be embraced, not scared of. So if you're having a stall, I know it's scary, but just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Keep following the program to suit. I believe that every program you should try for six weeks, do not write me in my inbox and tell me you tried keto, keto way of eating, and it's been three days and you ain't lost no weight. I'm not even going to respond to you because seriously, even with me having weight loss surgery, I fight every single day for every pound I lose and I stick shit out. Like you have to stick it out. Even though I have this tool, I know that I am going to lifelong be watching, monitoring my weight, watching what I eat, watching what I drink watching how much activity I do. It's just something called life. You have to grow up and embrace it and embrace that you have to stick to something in order for it to work. All right, my weight loss peeps, that is the end of this video. Please comment below and let me know what other topics you want me to talk about. If you wanna see more what I eat in the days, if you want me to talk about other things as it relates to weight loss surgery specifically, weight loss in general, just anything, comment below. I absolutely love and appreciate your feedback. Thanks so much for watching my channel. Do not forget to subscribe and click that bell for notifications so you can be notified when I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay pretty and I'll see you in the next video.